Hello, Cambridge College students. My name is Brooks Winchell, Director of the Center for Excellence in Learning and Teaching. As I'm sure you all know, the coronavirus has been spreading and professors are looking for alternative formats for delivering their coursework. One format that many are opting for is setting up their classes through Zoom, which is conferencing software. Um, so if your professor decides to set up his or her class through Zoom, they'll send you a Zoom link. Uh, the purpose of this video is to show you how to access that Zoom link how to test your equipment and get onto Zoom, and how to manage your Zoom meeting. So as I mentioned, Zoom is an internet-based conferencing platform. I think it's one of the best ones out there. It has a lot of good features for students and faculty. You do not need a Zoom account to um, join a Zoom meeting as a student. You only need one to run one, so the faculty will need one, but students do not. Um, so let me show you how you get into your meeting. So if your professor does decide to uh, run his or her class through Zoom, the professor will send you an email, and the email um, will have a Zoom invitation that looks just like this. It'll say who created it. It'll also say uh, probably what the name of the course is and the times that it's running. You'll have your Zoom link, which is what you need to click to get in, and you'll have call-in numbers. We do not advise students to call in because Zoom is experiencing issues with bandwidth with their phones right now, so we're encouraging everybody to use the Zoom link, plus it's a much better experience on the computer. So to get into your Zoom meeting when it's class time, all you do is open up this email, click the link, and the first time you log into a Zoom meeting, it's going to have to download and run the Zoom app, but every additional time it'll be a little bit faster to get in. So the first time, it should automatically start downloading, but if it doesn't, you can click the Download and Run Zoom app. It downloads the app, which is perfectly safe for your computer or phone or any other device. Click the app. It'll install. And after it's finished installing, it'll automatically run the Zoom app. The first thing it's going to ask you for is your name. So you want to put in your full name, but you can click Remember for Future Meetings. That's what you're going to show up as in the Zoom meeting, and so your professor and students will be able to see you that way. Then you click Join Meeting. It's going to ask if you want to join with video or without video. It's best practice to join with video. I can't do that because I'm using my camera to make a video right now, so I'm going to join without video. But I encourage everybody to join with video for a better experience. It's going to make a doorbell sound when I first go in, and it's going to ask me if I want to join with computer audio. I do, and if I know that my computer audio is working, I can just click this button and connect it. But I can also choose to test speaker and microphone to make sure that my equipment's working. So if I click that button, hear a ringtone, that means your speaker works, you click yes. You're talking and it talks back to you. That You're means talking you, and it talks back to you. It means your microphone works, you click yes. And then you click join with computer audio here and here. And now we're into our Zoom meeting and we're connected with audio. If we had started our video, we'd also be connected with video. So once we're in our Zoom meeting, on the main screen we're going to see the professor and we might have some tiles on the right here where we can see other students. And we can click through those and we can change what we're seeing. If a professor has a PowerPoint that he or she's sharing, you'll probably be able to see that PowerPoint on your screen. Um, Along the bottom are several controls. Most of these are for the faculty. You don't need to worry too much about them, but there are some things that you do want to um, pay attention to. One is your video. If your video is live, you can click it or unclick it to pause or mute your video or to make your video live. Same with the microphone. Right now my microphone's live, so I can see that it's green. If I, if I click it, it puts an X through it. That means that it's not live, so nobody can hear me. In general, it's best practice to leave your microphone muted unless you want to talk because there could be background noise around you that could be distracting in the meeting or in the class. Um, along the bottom you'll see participants which will show you who else is in that meeting. You'll also have a share screen option. You probably won't have to use that but your professor may ask you to share your screen. Um, there's a chat feature which will allow you to chat to either everyone in the meeting or to specific people in the meeting. And there's a fun reaction button, which you can use to make quick reactions in the chat to show uh, how you feel about certain things that are happening in the class. 
If you're interested in advanced features when you're meeting, you can click these arrows to access different audio settings and this arrow to access different video settings. So I encourage you to play around with those. Um, but for the most part, you're going to be just interacting with your professor and your students and the content in here. And then when the meeting is done, all you need to do is click Leave Meeting. So I hope this was helpful for you. My name is Brooks Winchell, the Director of the Center for Excellence in Learning and Teaching. If you have any questions about getting into or managing a Zoom meeting, you can email me at brooks.winchell at cambridgecollege.edu, or you can call me at 617-873-0499. Uh, thanks for watching this video, and uh, good luck using Zoom.